so that's uh, nice. uh, Don Blaylock, I you know, noticed his back. Kind of how is he doing right now from his uh, recovering from his injuries? He's doing well. He's uh, been pretty consistent. The off-season program was good for him in terms of getting confidence, changing the direction, uh, doing some things well. You know, I think he'd be the first to tell you he's still rusty, but uh, he's he's so confident with the ball in his hands. He catches the ball really well. He's smart. Um, he's very savvy route runner in the slot. Uh, he's done a tremendous job there. He's been back catching punts as well, and you know he brings some veteran experience. Really, right now at receiver, anybody with experience is a veteran because we don't have many guys with uh, a lot of experience there. But he's done a tremendous job. You know, uh, Dom never complains. He just works, and uh, he handles the cards. He's been dealt really well, and uh, he's he dealt with some really tough resiliency, but he has overcome it, and I've been really proud of Dom. Kirby, we heard a lot the last few days about Jamon. Just uh, what have you seen from him so far this spring and inside linebacker? Yeah, I almost didn't know who you were talking about because he goes by Pop for us. So uh, Pop's done a good job. Uh, he's, you know, he's getting opportunity. That's the biggest thing I would say. I mean, you could make the case that he's probably where, um, you know, all those guys were. Quay, Channing, Nakobe as their, their second uh, year, kind of starting their second year when really He's still in his first year if you really want to look at the grand scheme of things. I and mean, this is a young man that didn't play football his senior year due to COVID. So he came in a little heavy, and he'd be the first to tell you he was too heavy when he first got here. Uh, he did not play the season, so he was rusty, but he helped on special teams, uh, played some some, uh, some some time in games when we had leads. Uh, but he's trying to take on a leadership role. There's a real big void, you know, and this common theme you'll hear, there's a void there because of all the guys that left and also the guys injured. You know, I got a lot of respect for, for Tresman trying to push through a, a tough knee injury, and he's been out there um, trying to get reps. The two freshmen, uh, Jalen Walker and C.J. Washington, are pushing through. And then Sori. Sori's another guy that really almost has zero experience because he didn't get to play inside linebacker much in high school. So all of those guys collectively, they have talent. They don't have experience. And the only way to get experience is time. Hey, Kirby, what was the, the nature of your discussions with Stetson after the championship game in terms of leading him to come back? Um, you know, I'm sure he had some questions um, that you all wanted to hash out. No, we didn't, uh, we didn't have. We had a couple conversations just in passing, and uh, he reached out a couple times and said he really wanted to, to come back and um, wanted to continue to get better. And, um, you know, there was, wasn't a lot there. There weren't a lot of questions and things. It was more. He feels like that he's grown as a quarterback. He knows that we showed a lot of confidence in Stetson, if you didn't notice. And uh, and he answered that with uh, the way he played. I think he'd be the first to tell you he can still grow and get better. And, uh, you know, we have high expectations for Stetson, but we also have high standards of what we expect Stetson to do in terms of leading our offense, in terms of going to class and doing the right things. And we're still challenging him to do those things. Hey, Kirby, what are some of those things you want to see Stetson, make, Stetson get better at this spring? Make decisions, right? We were late over the middle a couple of times with balls and late in the season. And, you know, he, he, the first day he didn't play perfect. He made some really good plays for us with his feet, his legs, his decision making. But you just want to take out the, you know, some of the bonehead throws, some of the bonehead mistakes um, that he's made from time to time. And, you know, hey, it's easy for him to say he hadn't had an opportunity to correct those mistakes because the, the guy was taking threes at this time last year. You know, he was, he was taking reps as a, as a three or sparingly and wasn't getting a lot of reps. So he got a lot of work fast, and uh, we feel like he's, he's still showing progress. He's done some really nice things this spring, but that should be, should be expected for a guy with his uh, experience level. I guess just following up on Stetson again, have you seen more of those leadership type things this spring now that he's the, the old head in that quarterback room? And, and looking for ahead to the ball, how can you know the one reps now help him um, you know, going into the next season? Well, I think he can grow. He took a lot, a lot of the one reps from whatever point it was last year moving forward. In terms of leadership, you know, we probably, we're still working on that. You know, we're, we're not where we need to be in terms of um, leadership, guys challenging guys. I thought it was really good on Saturday in terms of leadership, and then things got a little tough out there today, whether you call it Tuesday, two days off, I don't know, I can't say it was hot. I mean, it felt mighty good to me, but we didn't have uh, the level of practice I would expect, and you would think that whether it's the quarterback, the receiver, whoever the leaders are, they're gonna stand up and push the guys, and 
we probably didn't get what we needed out of that today. I was a little disappointed in the, the practice. Kobe, I don't know if this is too existential a question, but I don't do even you know what existential is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you'll you'll know when you know what existential. Is. You, 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 George, you yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think it's like for someone like Keeley Ringo, who's made a play that is gonna you know, it, it's gonna go down in war. He's always gonna be remembered for it, but he's still got his life ahead of him. He's still got career ahead of him, including here. What is it like for a guy like that? Well. I, it's hard for me to answer that because, I, 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 first of all, I don't think that play won the game. Um, I know people may beg to differ, but I would argue the, the offensive drive prior to that did a lot to help that. I would argue that um, a lot of the plays made in the red area did that. I, I never look at a game and say one play did it because it's not really that way. There's so many plays that were made in that game that, that, could, that you could point that to. And what he can't do is let that play distract or deter his development. Because he'll be the first to tell you, he made an outstanding play, a play that will live in lore and do great. But he also had some plays in that game that weren't so good. He had some tackle situations he knows he's got to improve on. And what makes me most proud of Keeley is he's taking it out there to the field and he's really working on the physical part and being a better tackler. Um, he's playing with more confidence. If anything, that play gives him a little more confidence to play with, where most of the year he was working on that confidence. You know, he was a guy that, you know, teams went after probably more than they went after DK, and uh, he had a chance to make some plays, and he's starting to get some confidence. But, you know, he, he can let that play live in infamy and, and live off of that play, or he can decide, you know what, I'm going to make a lot of those plays, and I want to be a great player, and I want to go make money and play in the NFL and develop. And I think that's the route he's taking. I know this, he's going to get a lot of encouragement from me to make sure that he does that. And the one thing I'll say is so far, He's done that. Like, I, I, I push Keely because I know that he can be a really good player. And he hasn't run away from that coaching or uh, turn his nose up or not handle it the right way. If anything, he's trying to take on a leadership role. Given how thin you are at the cornerback position, what kind of opportunity do guys like Kamari Lasseter, Nyman Green, and Dalen ever have just because there are going to be so many reps available to them this spring? Yeah, a lot of opportunity. I mean, they, they're taking every single rep with the ones and twos. So those guys are out there. That's. You know, receiver and DB, we have never in seven years been this thin, ever been this thin. And you can point a finger and blame it anywhere you want, but it's the life of college football coach now. You just, you don't have depth. You don't have it anywhere. It's, it's easy to leave and go places. Those guys are a little more uh, maybe higher maintenance in terms of uh, thinking of themselves, and, and they expect to play right away, and they're quicker to go. So. It's certainly a position of concern for us in terms of recruiting and development at the skill position. Coach, with uh, Devontae and Jordan moving on, what kind of uh, things is uh, Jalen Carr kind of doing to maybe try to assert himself, maybe a little bit more become a leader of that defensive line? Well, uh, Jalen's a good football player. Um, I think that uh, he's taking a role in Trey's room of trying to set an example for others. And uh, that's, that's, you know, Devontae and, and Jordan did it's fine a job and really Trevon in that same category along with Julian. They did a, they set a standard of work ethic and you won't, you know, whether it's Jalen, Zion, whoever's gonna control that. Um, but Jalen's certainly talented and uh, you have to push. You have to push, you have to be willing to push yourself and give great effort in practice because really that's what set Devontae wide apart. He he played himself into a really good player. He was not that player when he got here. He was not that talented a player when he got here. He he worked himself to that. He like lost weight. He got stronger. He got quicker. He wasn't the player year one, two, and three that he was four and five. And we'd like to have the same thing with Jalen. He was certainly a very talented player as a, a freshman and sophomore. But um, we'd like to get more out of him. Trevor, can you speak a little on uh, the new coaches out there? I know, I know you're only a few practices in, but what, what they're bringing to the to the team and how you guys are all meshing as you gel as a coaching staff. I think they're trying to figure out where they're going right now because we got a lot of drills and a lot of things going on at practice. So they're still getting their feet wet. They've had four days to do that to figure out where they're going, how we do it, what the expectation is. Uh, what I like about all of them is they're enthusiastic and good leaders. And uh, I want their players to take on the personality of the coaches. And there's certainly been uh, great energy out of those coaches. We got to get a little more energy out of our players. Uh, when things get tough at practice, but that's that's the responsibility of the coaches, and 
uh, I'm very proud of pleased of what those guys have done. Kirby, in replacing Trayvon, what is it that you're looking for at that position, and how does Michael Williams factor into that? Too early to tell. I mean, look, the expectation is, you know, you guys put so much expectation on these guys. I mean, I'm just trying to get Michael to know what a six technique is and a nine technique is, just like I did with Trayvon when he first got here. So, you know, he doesn't have to be Trayvon Walker. That's not what he has to do. And we're not going to replace Trayvon Walker with – we don't have another Trayvon Walker. You know, those guys are once-in-a-lifetime players. They're that size and that speed. So um, we're going to coach the guys we got. We're going to you know, teach them to play really hard, play really physical, um, and not have an expectation to get compared to someone else because I don't like those comparisons. Kirby, I guess just overlooking this, the whole program that you've built over these last six years, is there anything routine about your job yet, or would you still consider every day challenging? How would you approach that? I don't know. I don't. I look at every day as independent of the other. I think I feel like a broken record because I don't. I don't think I, the only thing that changes is your team, right? And you have different players. You have different coaches. You have different demands. And I just go with the theory of WIN. What's important now? When I get up in the morning, I say, okay, what's most important today? I got to call this mother. I got to call this player. I got to talk to this kid. I got to make sure these coaches know what we're doing in this situation. I got to decide how we're going to practice. And I really just live day by day because I don't. I don't look at it as routine or monotonous because I'm trying to do it different. You know, I'm trying to change it up, have a different way of doing it, excite the players, um, just develop young men. And then I don't think that's routine. I don't, I don't think you get into a routine. I think when you get into a routine, sometimes you get complacent, and uh, complacency will be the killer of us all. Kirby, you talked about those new coaches. I want to ask about Fran Brown. Just what kind of stood out about him going through the interview process, and what have you seen so far? I think he's, he's very charismatic and, uh, you know, you, you got to really spend time with Fran to get to know Fran and Fran has uh, done a tremendous job in terms of establishing relationships. It was very evident when you talk to people who have worked on the staff with him um, about his charisma and uh, I was very pleased with um, how hard he works, uh, relationship with the players, he's relentless on the road recruiting. I mean, uh, the guy communicates so well and pushes so hard. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good coach. I think he's a rising star in this profession because of the energy he puts into it. He's very coachable. Uh, he does what you ask, and if he doesn't know what to do, he asks. And that's important. It's just as important to ask when you don't know um, as it is to know. And uh, he's been really good uh, thus far in that area. Take two more questions. Lauren, you got one? Oh. Carter, we were talking about pizza while we were waiting today. Where is it? I'm hungry. Uh, you got a top thing with pizza? Like styles or like? Or in Athens. Man, if I do that, I'll throw somebody out of the I gave you three. <laughs> I, I, my kids could do that. I got uh, Andrew's out there somewhere. He could tell you flat out. I don't. I usually get the. Uh, the, the subs. I get a, a meatball sub when it's a pizza place. So I'll eat the leftover pizzas the kids don't eat. And you can tell. So see you. <laughs>